Okinawa Jima was the scene of the last great battle of the Pacific War. The capital and nucleus of the bead-like Ryukyu chain, Okinawa was only 495 miles from the coast of China, 380 miles from Formosa, and 415 miles from Kyushu. It screened the East China Sea, insulated the teeming coastal cities of China, and it was the lock on Japan's southern door. A vital link in the imperial mechanism, Okinawa was the funnel through which the enemy fed and reinforced his embattled fortresses to the south. Japanese aircraft, merchantmen, and fleet units paused at Okinawa's airfields and harbors en route to South China, Malaya, the Indies, and the Carolines. Okinawa and the Ryukyus was the Japanese jugular vein. In American hands, Okinawa would represent the first conquest of Japanese home soil, for this island was an imperial prefecture. In American hands, Okinawa would mean the reduction of Japan from a powerful empire to an isolated land awaiting the shock of invasion. In January and February 1945, carriers of the United States Navy probed the waters of the East China Sea, launching strike after strike against the Ryukyus. Okinawa was the principal target for cameras as well as bombs. Off Okinawa, a fringing reef extended seaward in some places to a distance of 2,500 yards. Behind the reef that girdled the island lay hundreds of miles of unbroken rocky coastline. Naha, once a prosperous port city of 65,000 people, this city had become a constant target and heavily populated. Here, the terrain was undulating and contained small coral hillocks. In central Okinawa, the terrain grew irregular. Wooded foothills, escarpments, and terraces replaced the level country. In the north, mountains rose out of the sea to form a virtually unbroken spine in the interior. On overcrowded, impoverished Okinawa, the people carved their terraces over whole mountains in a desperate effort to exist. Aerial reconnaissance indicated that in the coming operation, space would be an ally of the Japanese. To the United States 10th Army, commanded by Lieutenant General Simon Bolivar Buckner, went the mission of landing on and seizing Okinawa Jima. Organized prior to the operation, the 10th Army was composed of the 24th Corps and the 3rd Marine Amphibious Corps. Comprising the 3rd Marine Amphibious Corps was Major General Lemuel C. Shepard, Jr., 6th Marine Division, Major General Pedro Del Valle's 1st Marine Division, and Corps troops. The plan for the initial landing of the 10th Army was as follows. The 6th Marine Division was to land on the green and red beaches which extended generally from a point north of Sobe Town to Zampa Masaki. The 1st Marine Division was to land on the right of the 6th Marine Division between Sobe Town and the Bisha River. The 24th Corps was to land on the right of the 1st Marine Division south of the Bisha River. Yontan Airfield, the enemy's principal fighter base on the island, was the primary objective of the 6th Marine Division. Located on a high plateau less than 2,000 yards inland from the beach, Yontan Airfield would be required as a base for daylight and night fighter marine aviation. Easter Sunday, 1 April 1945, was the day of the landing. It was designated as Love Day. Under ideal sea conditions and covered by naval gunfire, assault battalions of the 4th and 22nd Marines headed for the beaches of Okinawa. Veterans of Macon, Tulagi, Guadalcanal, New Georgia, Bougainville, Emera, Eniwetok, and Guam, these Marines had just completed months of extensive amphibious training in the Lower Solomons. While Colonel Merlin Schneider's 22nd Marines moved shoreward toward the green beaches, Colonel Allen Shapley's 4th Marines headed for the red beaches, from which they could directly assault Yontan Airfield. The beach at Okinawa was different. Landings were virtually unopposed, not only on the green and red beaches, but along the entire 10th Army front. Over the jagged coral and twisted Casarina stumps, troops moved inland, crouching low. Directly inland, the men found terraces which ascended toward a high plateau. 
grotesque limestone tombs have been built into the hillsides by the ancestor-worshipping Okinawans. These were potential hillboxes. With a beachhead established, the attack developed. Advancing over a patchwork of sweet potatoes, soybean, and rice fields, the troops neared Yontan Airfield. Ham tracks lent mobile support to the infantry. Resistance encountered during this phase was light and sporadic. It was quickly silenced by marine fire teams and riflemen. By noon of Love Day, Yontan Airfield had been secured by the 4th Marines. The big airdrome was found essentially intact. Trapped in their revetments, enemy fighters had been destroyed by airstrikes. A master of deception, the enemy made use of dummies. This shadow-casting straw dummy had been a problem to air photo interpreters. The 6th Marine Division struck out from Yontan Airfield across the brilliant red-soiled expanse. East of Yontan Airfield, contact was made with small enemy holding forces. By L plus three, the Pacific had been reached and the battle for Ishikawa Isthmus had begun. Henceforth, the enemy would have tenacious allies. Space and time were on his side. For the division, success in the north would be measured in speed and distance, as well as by casualties inflicted on the enemy. Troops outflanked the Japanese on the coasts, while battalions of infantry spliced their way into the rugged interior to find the enemy and destroy him. Ferreting him out in the heavy, deceptive vegetation was difficult. Relentlessly efficient, fire teams worked their way into position and then methodically erased snipers. Second timing made it possible to seal the enemy in his caves before he cut you down. In the mountains of Ishikawa Isthmus, these dramatic sequences were filmed. Dazed and burned, the snipers survived the blast. First aid was administered, the prisoner was interrogated. Such interrogations revealed the locations of other snipers and the hunt went on. Along the coasts of the Isthmus, the division was in full motion. By utilizing every vehicle, by improvisation and tireless energy, this infantry division moved with the speed of a motorized unit. The uninterrupted forward movement achieved by the division kept the enemy off balance. Obstacles on which the Japanese had so heavily depended were overcome by the combination of effective equipment and trained hands. Heavy rains turned the coastal flats into a morass, but this obstacle too was overcome. 